you know, this is the real issue is that non-adherence is the norm. And until healthcare professionals understand that, it will carry on being the norm. I, I interviewed a lot of people in the US when I was there and I have a, I, I've taught adherence and non-adherence to undergraduate pharmacy students for a long time. And I played them this clip from an interview and it was anonymized. And it was a lady talking about a particular medicine that she'd halved the dose because it gave her side effects, really bad side effects. Um, and she's very, you know, clear when she's talking. She's obviously very, you know, she's clear what she's talking about. She's intelligent. And I asked the students to guess what the disease was that the medicine was for. She doesn't mention it in the clip. And none of the people, none of the students guessed that the medicine that the, the lady had halved the dose because of the side effect without talking to her doctor was for breast cancer. They were shocked. And I said, this is the norm. You know, this is what people do. And they won't tell their clinician because they'll be told they're stupid or they should do this. They should do that. But this is what people do. And somehow as a pharmacist, you have to develop the skills to be able to elicit that type of honest account of medicines taking from people. Because until you do that, you are not going to move anything forward. So I think you've just given us phrase of the year there. Non-adherence is the norm. Yeah, yeah. I'm, take, I'm taking that one away. And, and, and for all healthcare professionals, I mean, doctors in particular, but that sort of you know adopting a sort of non-patronizing approach and just sitting with someone and how often do i go to the wards in clandoc hospital or elsewhere and there's a patient there who's got two laxido sachets qds prescribed because they're very constipated and you look at the chart and it's six 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 because they're not taking them because you sit down with them and they say i, I feel too sick to take it i feel i feel sick this is a large volume and Sometimes the nurses are, you know, diluted into the same glass, which you're not supposed to do, but, it, you know, it's not going to happen. You're far more realistic to sit with the person and give them some choices and smaller medicines and, and listen to them. And then they'll probably take the medicine, you know, uh, if if they're very constipated, you know. I think there's something really powerful, Claire, about learning together that I think we often probably don't do in pharmacy as much as the other professionals, because historically, we dealt with medicines and processes rather than people. And I think just we've done, um, I've been involved in doing this same kind of thing um, as what you're saying. And it's really amazing that there are things you cannot teach from a classroom. There are skills you cannot teach in a classroom. And you need to have conversations about real cases so that people can have their own aha moments and really get it. Um, and I think, we, I mean, as we're moving, I mean, looking forward to, you know, next year with all the overprescribing and pharmacists at the forefront of delivering this, we almost need to kind of make this the norm. Otherwise, we're going to always second guess. We're never going to ask people. We're always going to be on the BMF, on the all the research things, and we're never going to make space for the patient. And we're always going to be scared um, until we start learning by doing and by, you know, learning from other people, I don't think we're going to move very far. So I'll say well done. Guys, I've noticed that uh, Jamie and Steve and Paul are giving each other secret signals. I think they feel, they feel this has gone too serious and they're like... <laughs> Steve's bedtime, that's what that signal means. Steve must have been bed at 10 o'clock. Yeah, it was brilliant. It was brilliant. We'll have to move on. Well, no, we must finish on one point. What point? It's about all. It's about all health professionals, isn't it? It doesn't matter whether you're a pharmacist, pharmacy technician. No, so it's not about the healthcare professionals. It's about the patient. Yeah. Oh no, sorry. I meant that we all, all health professionals need to realise that they need to ask the patient. Let's move on to the final round. These questions from me now. Okay. Oh. Questions from me. Oh. What do we do? You, hands, hands up. Yeah, hands up. Hands up for your team. The scores are level at the moment. Question one. In the covert observational study I mentioned at the start of the podcast, what were the two tins of chocolates that the researchers looked at? Rachel. Quality Street and Roses. Correct. Thank you. Question two. In the film The Princess Bride, Vizzini and Man in Black take part in a battle of wits. What was the name of the poison? I've recently watched that as well. Strychnine. Oh, Interesting. So didn't somebody, did somebody say strychnine? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, it's not strychnine. Mark, arsenic? No, it's a made-up poison. <laughs> Incredibly strong poison. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it, it was iocane, which came from Australia. <laughs> had 
doesn't smell, is odorless, tasteless, dissolves instant liquid, and is among the more deadlier poisons known to man. Mm. In 2008, the Christmas BMJ published the article Head and Neck Injury Risks in Heavy Metal, Headbangers Stuck Between Rock and a Hard Base. But can you tell me which two oral apothecary guests are our self-confessed heavy metal addicts? Captains are frozen out here. Claire? Oh, no, sorry. Oh, going to have to throw it over to Jonathan. Jamie and Steve. Oh, no, loses a point. Loses a point. Which two oral apothecary guests are our our self-confessed heavy metal addicts? This is a damning indictment on your listening um, of our podcast. (laughs) (laughs) You friends of the podcast, you. (laughs) Okay, I'll throw it. I'm going to have to throw it open to, to Gimmo. Correct. Correct. For a further bonus point, what were the interventions that the author suggests to reduce the risk of injury? Have a think of three ways that you can reduce your risk of injury from head banging. Shorter hair. Shorter hair. Okay. Play Ed Sheeran. Close. Very <laughs> close, Rachel. Substitution of adult orientated rock. Listen to Michael Bolton, Celine Dion, Enya, and Richard Clayderman. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. Which episode is my favourite episode of the Oral Apothecary? My first one. <laughs> it's a trick question. Obviously, I can't have a favourite episode. All the episodes are works of art. Oh. The question five. The Oral Apothecary podcast climbs the medical podcast charts when we release an episode. Believe it or not, it does. It enters podcast charts all over the world. In Great Britain, we make it into the top 10 on several occasions. But in which country have we topped the charts? Mongolia. I can't say close to that because it's nowhere near. Azerbaijan. There's a link with Azerbaijan, isn't there? New Zealand. New Zealand. New Zealand. No. Montenegro. Australia. No. Barbados. I'll put you out of your misery. It's Kenya. Ooh. <laughs> I thought it's Kuwait. No, Kenya. Which guest chose Bendrafluoride as their desert island drug? Oh. I can remember. Oh, captains can't play oh. anyway. Message me, Steve. Tell me. <laughs> was it the, the polypharmacy guy, the Canadian. Was it the Canadian? James McCormack. No. It was recent. It was this season. This season. <laughs> this series. <laughs> well, maybe I've got it wrong. I don't know. But I've got I've got the spreadsheet open in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had remembered before I looked at the spreadsheet. It was Dr. Tessa Lewis, general practitioner and medical advisor. He can't have a point for that. Tessa joined us in series two. Now, for a bonus question, what was the musical instrument that Tessa linked to her journey of mastery as a musician and as a GP? Mark? Andrew? <laughs> no. Was the cello? It was the cello. It was the cello, correct. Yes, Jonathan, well done. Dr. Karen Sankey also joined us in series two. What was Karen's career anthem? Song and artist, please. You know, some of us listen while we're doing oh, other things. Well, we is, is we this, don't write no. There's, there's no. going to be an inquiry after this. There's going to be an inquiry. <laughs> I've been listening to The Tale of Two Cities. I'm sorry, I'm behind on the oral apothecary. Oh, now who she says. Was it Sweet Child of Mine? Uh, no, that was Jamie's. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. I think that's a hard question, that one. Paloma okay. Faith, make your, own music, make your own kind of Correct. music. Correct, thank Paloma you. Paloma Faith. Is thank it you. 996? Nine nine was it? No. Well, nice pronunciation, though. I think you deserve an extra yeah, point. Yeah, point for that. I think, do you know what? That, that, that final pronunciation is just, that was, the final, that was the final moment. We went into injury time, <laughs> and uh, the blisters, through Rachel's final <sighs> pronunciation, just nudged it. Congratulations. Yay. I mean, and then, Gimo, I think that's unfair, because we've been fair throughout the game. Basically, we've been giving points away. We've well, been you have points. Yeah. And, so and it's, Rachel, it's been difficult to get a word in edgeways. So Rachel like an eagle. So like, like an eagle. Most of the podcast and then sort of even deducted points from us, basically. But yeah, fair play doesn't win the place. It's all very well saying so like an eagle, but weasels don't get sucked into turbine <laughs> engines. At least we feel good about ourselves, you know. Do you, do you, Mark? Really? Yes. Do you? Do you? Yes. You stole my question. Right. <laughs> we need to do some compulsories now, folks. So a big thank you to Claire, Lely, Sam, Mark and Jonathan for returning to the podcast. Don't forget our next episode will be released early in the new year when we'll be joined by medicine safety specialist Lisa Green. We look forward to catching up with Lisa next time on the Oral Apothecary when she gets her chance to share her Desert Island drug, her career anthem and her book for the Oral Apothecary Library. You can contact us via Twitter at Oral Apothecary. We're on LinkedIn and you can email us at oralapothecarypod at gmail.com. Finally, for this year, on behalf of the three apothecaries, we would like to thank all our guests that have joined us this year. 
for taking time out of busy lives, for sharing their stories with us and with you, the listeners. Also a chance to say thanks to the team behind the team at the Oral Apothecary, in particular to our sound engineer, Jimbo Slough, and our various editorial boards. You know who you are. And finally, to you listening at home, on your commutes, on your training runs, your 5Ks, your 10Ks and your marathons, whether we accompany you during the housework, your ironing or walking the dog, thank you for all your words of encouragement and support during the year. However you're choosing to spend the festive season, we would like to wish everyone a safe and Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. This was a Three Apothecaries production. Sound engineer, Jimbo Slough. Original music, Jamie Brewster. Artwork by David Baker. Thanks for listening to the Oral Apothecary Christmas Special Podcast, where we always dispense with accuracy. This episode of the Oral Apothecary is sponsored by OneLessPill.com and Jamie Hayes Executive Coaching. (laughs) 